Ben Shapiro, who has been anointed the king of conservative media by the corporate controllers, the neocon establishment, is remaining completely silent regarding the growing controversy over his company, The Daily Wire, canceling Candace Owens for simply disagreeing with his preferred foreign policy regarding one particular little country over in the Middle East. Of course, it's perfectly fine if anybody in the media trashes Ukraine and President Zelensky or Russia or China or Canada or any country around the world, but the most mild, reasonable disagreement or criticism with anything that Israel does and then the conservative establishment starts engaging in cancel culture. You may recall last year, Jeremy Boring, the co-founder and CEO of The Daily Wire, posted a nearly one hour long video detailing their side of the story regarding the Steven Crowder Daily Wire beef, but regarding the cancellation of Candace Owens, which is actually a much, much bigger story with many more implications regarding manipulation of media and the controlling of certain narratives, Conservatives engaging in cancel culture when there's only reasonable and mild criticism of a certain foreign country. It's crickets. He was confronted about it, however, yesterday on a Twitter space. And I'll play that clip for you in just a moment. Twitter spaces are those audio group chats that live stream out conversations. And that Twitter space was started because of another can of worms that he opened by literally declaring that the phrase Christ is king is anti-Semitic. So the Twitter space was organized to discuss how absolutely idiotic and Christian phobic that is. But then he joined the space and was brought up to defend his position. And then he was confronted later about the elephant in the room. Jeremy, what did Candace do that she deserved to be fired? Well, I'm not going to have a conversation about Candace. Uh, when you run a business, you're not at liberty to have discussions about people that you fire. Uh, the, I know that everybody would like for me to be able to do that. I'm not able to do that. Oh, so he did fire her. So it wasn't that the contract ended or that, you know, she just wanted to go somewhere else. It was a firing. Interesting. I'd like to ask a little bit more about uh, Candace Owens uh, being fired by the Daily Wire. I just want to preface this to say, like, I was an organizational psychologist for a while. I worked with a lot of organizations that were, quite frankly, larger than the Daily Wire in terms of, you know, helping them with staffing issues, working through the employees to fire, things like that. Jeremy, I'm just wondering, and I guess I'm asking this as a yes or no question, did Candace Owens violate any specific policies at the Daily Wire? And I'm not asking you to tell us which policies. I'm just asking, was she fired because she violated a company policy? I'm not going to make any comment about the Daily Wire separation from Candace Owens in this forum. So that's no then, just to be clear with everyone, that's that's a no. She did not violate any well, company that, policies. <laughs> well, I don't, that's I, very, I don't, wait, I don't, very sneaky, we're not. That's a very sneaky way, way of describing to me let, let an answer that I did not give. If, if she violated a company policy, you would have been able to say yes to the question, Jeremy. I know that much. Okay, so Candace is not here. This is not about Candace specifically. Let's have a conversation around the broader issue, though. Now, if an employee at any company flew off the handle and started making racist comments, like actual racist comments or actual anti-Semitic comments, not just comments that are often just called racist or anti-Semitic, which are just, you know, the most mild criticism or mentioning certain facts about certain things, then the company would fire them and then issue a statement and confirm, yes, this person made some terribly racist or anti-Semitic comments and we have a zero tolerance policy for that kind of stuff. But the Daily Wire will not say why they got rid of Candace Owens because we all know why they got rid of Candace Owens and they're hoping that this controversy just goes away because you're not supposed to notice this aspect of conservative media. And by verbalizing and confirming the obvious, they're just going to be adding fuel to the fire that they're hoping will die down. Matt Walsh went on a very unusual hiatus from Twitter over the weekend and didn't post about it or anything, which is very odd for him and most of the mainstream social media personalities who can't go more than two hours without posting their two cents over there about any particular topic. And of course, on his show yesterday, he 
completely avoided the elephant in the room and just stuck to talking about gender issues. Michael Knowles did his best to keep his job and his millions of dollars that the Daily Wire is paying him, while at the same time at least, well, saying something about the situation, which you'll see, I'll play the clip in just a moment, is sad and pathetic. He is in a tough spot because not only does he want to keep his job over there and his millions of dollars, but he also is very good friends with Candace Owens' husband and the godfather to one of her children. So he felt his conscience was eating him away, and so he had to say something, and this was his statement. Access is sound great. Yeah, this news just broke about... <laughs> I don't know, an hour or two before the show started uh, this morning. Uh, so Candace has parted ways with the Daily Wire. I, I, I forget how exactly they phrased it. In the most pathetic way possible, with one tweet from Jeremy Boring, and then that was only retweeted by Ben Shapiro, so that there would be literally no statement that could be attributed to Ben about it. The, the, I think Jeremy announced it on his Twitter and said the Daily Wire and Candace have ended their relationship. Uh, so... I don't have some grand statement to make about that. I don't think it's my place as a host of, on this network to make some grand statement about it. Uh, you, you know, because this is a very personal business and a personal company, a particularly personal company. Uh, which is why we would think that you would express sadness about your own company engaging in cancel culture. Uh, you know the relationships already. You know that I am... Uh, a close personal friend of Candace and the godfather to her daughter. Her husband, George, is one of my best friends. Uh, and you know that I've been at the Daily Wire for a very long time, since the very early days. You know, Jeremy Boring is one of my best friends. Even Ben, even Ben, I'm willing to admit in a moment of candor, is a, a longtime friend of mine, uh, as are Caleb and all the other people around here. So, uh, you know, always unfortunate when... People go their separate ways, and uh, that's that's life, I suppose. Uh, but that's really all I have to say about it. You know, I, I don't. Uh, I don't appreciate you asking me this question. You think I'm going to bite the hand that feeds me? If you were, if you were hoping for some grand, uh, you know, epic speech on the future of media and uh, the industry, I, I don't really have that. Which is why people tune into me, your trusted independent media analyst. Just a guy in my kitchen on a laptop. So subscribe to my channel if you're new here. There's plenty more to come, so stay tuned. But obviously, you're not going to get information and analysis like this anywhere else. And if you were looking for juicy gossip and tea spilling, I, not, not only would I be unwilling to uh, divulge any of that, but I don't really have any uh, to give you. It's okay, Michael. Everybody knows it's so obvious that nobody even needs to say what the reason was. It's one of those uncomfortable truths that stares everybody right in the face, but few are bold enough to dare acknowledge it. This guy, whose name is Andrew Clavin, who is, I would say, like the redheaded stepchild of the Daily Wire, doesn't really have that many viewers. Nobody really cares what he says. This is probably the first time most people have even heard of him. But he did a rather lengthy video agreeing with the Daily Wire's decision to fire Candace Owens, saying that they did the right thing. You know, that's a, a dog whistle. When you start to refer in this kind of clever way to a certain group of people in Hollywood corrupting blacks, you're, you're not allowed to then put on an innocent look and say, well, I'm just saying there's certain people, just a few, you know, it's not, I'm just saying, you know, you're messing with us. You're messing with us, and everyone knows it, and no one is fooled except those people who want to pretend to be fooled because they hate the Jews. And then this guy who is ethnically Jewish but claims to be a Christian, which makes him, as some people say, a Messianic Jew. And a lot of people don't understand, how can you be a Jew and a Christian? They don't understand that being a Jew means either an ethnicity or a member of a religion, Judaism, or both. Because most Jews identify themselves as ethnic Jews, not religious Jews, because most Jews are actually atheists. And not only do they not follow Judaism of the Old Testament, they don't follow any religion whatsoever. So this guy, ethically is a Jew, says he accepted Jesus, but doesn't want Ben Shapiro to accept Jesus because, well, I'll let him explain. And, and you know, I, un I understand this. All, every, all of you who love Ben, and I love Ben, and Jordan Peterson, you all want to see them find Jesus because you know what joy and, and freedom that gives you, and, and you've 
certainly feel that it alters your relationship with God. But when I think about this, to be honest with you, uh, you know, and I know some people will disagree with this, but I, life is not a game show where you guess the name of God and, and you get to go to heaven. Honk, you know, yes, the name is Jesus. Uh, I look at Ben's life and I think if, if Ben were to embrace Jesus Christ, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. I just have this feeling that God has put this guy where he wants him to do what he wants him to do. And as you know, I feel that, you know, the Jews were not abandoned by God. Actually, sir, Jesus specifically said that may be one of the consequences of following him. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're not going to enter into fellowship with the one true God. Ben Shapiro doesn't even believe you have a soul. This is the final statement that Candace Owens made on what would be the last episode of her show. And even though it's very obvious what happened, even if you saw my previous breakdown of what happened, you definitely have to hear this. I want to be clear to you guys. I'm going to be honest with you because everybody's noticing it. Every single political commentator in America, every single one of them knows this, that if you do not step out and say things that are radically pro-Israel, or if you are too quiet on certain narratives and they want you to be radically pro-Israel, you can lose everything. That's truth. That is a fact. I'm not, I'm not feeling like I need to hide from that anymore because, or be afraid to say it rather, is a better way to say it, because I've endured this for years. I'm just at the end of my rope. I've, I have given so much rope here and I am just done with it. Every person that you are a fan of, they know this. Every person that you line up to go here speak, they know this. Again, it's not even on the basis of what you say. It can sometimes be on the basis of what you don't say. That an entire mob will assemble. They'll write piece after piece after piece until you subjugate. If you don't subjugate, the bounty grows larger. So yes, there was a large bounty on my head for the crime of refusing to suddenly hate Muslims and to condone Muslims getting bombed following October 7th. Everybody can see that. Yes, we can. And let me address one little mistake that she made, or rather a big mistake, although she still would have gotten fired without a doubt if she hadn't slipped up and done what I'm going to show you. And also, too, I saw some comments from people saying, Stephen Crowder was right about the Daily Wire. Stephen Crowder would have fired her as well if she was talking like this and mentioning some of the other things that I haven't pulled up the clips for, but she has expressed her belief that there is, in her opinion, a certain kind of mafia operating in Hollywood. And that kind of talk, Stephen Crowder would not have allowed it either. And the beef with Stephen Crowder and the Daily Wire, I covered in two previous videos. The Daily Wire actually was very open and transparent about the policies, and that was industry standard. Stephen Crowder was very deceptive in what he did there to try to leverage that deception in order to get him paid subscribers. Whole other issue. But... Steven Crowder would not have tolerated what Candace Owens was doing either. I saw a few comments from some people claiming that Candace Owens agrees with a particular anti-Semitic trope and all this because she did like a tweet that had an actual trope in it. Not like disagreeing with a Jew about the best flavor of ice cream, which the ADL will say is anti-Semitic. It was an actual trope. She didn't see that, however, because she only read the first sentence in the tweet and then immediately hit the heart button and then kept scrolling past that. And I can tell you from somebody who reads a lot of comments and I heart a lot of comments in the YouTube comments section, I've seen times where I'll see somebody say something and I'll hit the heart button. And then fortunately, I keep reading and then they do go kind of off the rails. I'm like, okay, I got to unlike that thing because I can't let that be seen because the enemy is watching and cataloging all of my little mistakes. And so once you have so many eyes on you, you make one little slip up. They're going to use that and they're going to exploit it. And so I saw a couple comments from some people you know, amplifying this claim that she agrees with this particular, I'm not even going to repeat it because you can just read it there on the screen. I don't want anybody to take me just reading that and take it out of context and try to claim that I said that or that I agree with that. But she did unfortunately like a tweet which had this in it later in the tweet. And so she did not see that. She would never like a tweet that says that. She was agreeing with the first sentence of that post. But again, 
one little slip up like that, they're just going to grab it and they're gonna brand you with it. This is a quote that I've seen attributed to numerous different individuals over the years. So I don't know if this is the guy who originally said it. It's kind of like one of those truisms where it might not even be fair to attribute it to coming from one individual because it's such an obvious observation that people verbalize. And that is an anti-Semite used to be a person who disliked Jews. Now it is a person who Jews dislike. And of course, that's a label that Ben Shapiro likes to hurl at anybody who doesn't support giving Israel American tax dollars, including Ron Paul, who was running for president back in 2012. And Ben Shapiro had a meltdown regularly on Twitter, slandering him over and over again and repeatedly calling him an anti-Semite and saying that Ron Paul just hates Jewish people because Ron Paul is not an interventionalist. Ron Paul doesn't want American tax dollars going to any foreign country, including Israel, which is a very common view that most Americans have. But of course, that view in mainstream conservative politics will get you branded an anti-Semite and fired from every major network. Ben Shapiro also labeled Ron Paul alt-right, along with Ann Coulter, Donald Trump, Pat Buchanan, and Alex Jones, a whole bunch of other people. Alt-right, of course, is a synonym for a neo-Nazi. So here's Ben Shapiro literally slandering Ron Paul and many others again as racists. Ben Shapiro called Scott Adams, the founder of the popular Dilbert comic, a racist because he simply said that it's okay for white people to want to live in predominantly white neighborhoods. Just to rewind for a second, Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, he said some racist stuff, which of course is indeed racist. What he said was in fact racist. You can fully acknowledge Scott Adams' racism and still also recognize that the media would be totally fine with Scott Adams' racism if it was directed in precise reverse at white people. In the United States, if you direct racism against black Americans, that of course is verboten, is very bad, and you'll have your career ended. And there's a strong case that that ought to be the case because racism is bad. There's a strong case, Ben Shapiro says, that it should be the case that people get fired from their jobs, white people get fired from their jobs, if they just simply express that they prefer to live in a white neighborhood, which is essentially all Scott Adams said. And because I have the memory of an elephant, thanks to stumbling across the teachings first written in an ancient scroll around 80 BC, which let's just say contains instructions on how to activate certain powers, which I won't get into now. I'll reveal that in a few years. But most people will say that it's fake, that it's a hoax, but it's very real. There's no question about it. But that's a topic for another video and another book in a few years. I remember Ben Shapiro famously quitting Breitbart as a publicity stunt to launch the Daily Wire while embracing Michelle Fields' hoax about Donald Trump's campaign manager at the time, Corey Lewandowski, allegedly grabbing her arm and trying to throw her to the ground when she was trying to bypass the protective area of Secret Service in order to confront Donald Trump. And he politely grabbed onto her arm to non-verbally signal that she's not allowed to go over there. Remember that? And I also recall very clearly back in 2016, Ben Shapiro saying that he preferred Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump because it would be better for the country. Uh, my concern is that, and one of the reasons I'm not voting for him is because I'm concerned that he hurts conservatism if he wins. If he wins, then it, really, because, the, because then you see this whole group of people who sort of follow him position to position based on loyalty to party and loyalty to, loyalty to him personally. Uh, if he, th that's, that's a serious concern to me. If he loses, uh, I think that he hurts conservatism less in some ways because there's been a repudiation of, of some of the things that he believes and says. Because little Ben was concerned that Donald Trump was going to cut government spending so much that that would also include cutting foreign aid to a certain little foreign country over in the Middle East. The existence of the state of Israel is the single greatest guarantor of my loyalty to the United States, frankly. Right? Because Israel exists, that means the United States is going to be a more welcoming place for me because Israel is there as a backstop in case anything should go wrong. There's so much more that you should know because these videos are just the tip of the iceberg. They're just the appetizer. If you really want the full four-course meal, then read my books like my new one, The War on Conservatives, which you should order in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. And of course, 
There's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check it out. Kanye decided that he was going to go full anti-Semitic. Kanye West, anti-Semitic, Kanye West saying an anti-Semitic thing, saying crazy anti-Semitic things, which is anti-Semitism. Kanye West uh, said some anti-Semitic things. And there are no two ways about this. The things that he said are not just like a little anti-Semitic, they're very anti-Semitic. This is all really bad stuff. Suffice to say, this is all very anti-Semitic and really, really bad stuff. He is saying openly anti-Semitic stuff. They are anti-Semitic. I mean, there, there's no two ways about them. No sympathy for anti-Semitic statements, I think, is a, is a fairly decent rule when it comes to situations like this one. So again, this is an anti-Semitic trope that that basically you can't say bad things about Jews. I mean, I've made my thoughts about Kanye West pretty clear. I mean, what he said is anti-Semitic. There's no question about it. I mean, what, what he said is pure, rote anti-Semitism. I mean, this is all anti-Semitism. Kanye's anti-Semitic remarks, saying openly anti-Semitic stuff. And Tucker cut a segment from his interview with Kanye, in which Kanye said a bunch of anti-Semitic stuff. Ridiculous anti-Semitic jerk. Undoubtedly anti-Semitic remarks. Anti-Semitism and, and the scope of anti-Semitism, it's again, for the 1,000th time, are in fact anti-Semitic. That's the way this works. There is a another Kanye West anti-Semitism story. There's no way to put this except to say that what Kanye West has been saying of recent vintage is just pure unbridled anti-Semitism. Kanye's wild anti-Semitic rantings, and, and that's what they are. I mean, they are wild anti-Semitic rantings. Again, there's no way to defend this. It is pure anti-Semitism, end of story. What he is spouting is, as I say, der Sturmer type anti-Semitism. Yay's anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism, and anti-Semite. Now, again, that's anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism. So, anti-Semite, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism. Ilhan Omar hates Jews just as much as Kanye West hates Jews. I'm sure I, I, will, I, will, I will comfort myself I'm sure tonight by sleeping on my bed made of money. I'm